like a bell cut. Okay, guys, um, back on the RS today. As you can see, I had a little bit of a, a tidy up with the engine block, paint the blue. Not sure if it's the right colour or not. Um, I think some of them came blue, some of them came red, some of them came black. Ain't got a clue. I like the blue though, so I paint the blue. Um, so we've got the turbo turned up. It's turbo time. Still waiting on the Roost Motorsport hoses. And so I'm hoping that we can get it all back together today. I've got new rock cover gasket, I've got all the hardware to fit the rock cover back on. I've got the seals for the injectors and the clamps for the injectors, which I'll show you in a bit. Um, so hopefully we can get this on and at least running. And um, yeah, just waiting for the hoses then after that. And then we can get it all back together and take for a nice drive. I think I'm going to leave this as it is and just see how that turns out. The paint might just burn off and go to a rusty mess anyway. Either that or a sandblaster and put it back to standard cast like that. And again with the heat it will just go into a rusty mess again. Just like that elbow there. So I'm just going to leave it like that. Um, I've got an alternator bracket as well which I took off the block this one here so we'll give that a bit of a shot blast and we'll paint that the same silver as well and just brighten up under there really that might be a bit too bright to what some people like um, but we'll just see what happens in the comments if people like it then great if not we'll when we take all this engine back out to do the full rebuild later on down its life and the restoration of the body shell um, We'll then tackle that and put it to how everyone think it should be. Um, yeah, we're just trying to get it up and running and just drive it for a few months just to see how it all is and see if we need to move, improve on something before we strip it all down and do all the restoration work. So we'll crack on. These are the two little brackets for the alternator that we're going to sandblast, hopefully. Just chuck them in your cabinet. And hopefully I can set you up so you can, so you can see it.
we go. Made light work of that. So now we'll be able to just prime them, give them a bit of paint, brighten them up a little bit. Okay, I've just um, put some paint on them brackets, let them to dry, but in the meantime, we'll get on and sort and sunny studs out. I've already taken the studs out, I've cleaned up the face. Um, we're just cleaning the, the stud holes out with one of these stud cleaner things, just to aid it in a little bit more. Um, I used an extractor, a stud extractor to take it out with, take the studs out with. Um, but when I put the studs back in, I like to do the, the double nut method, just locking the two nuts together. Wind that in. And then just using the spanner. Tighten up so that snugs up, and then you just unlock the the nuts, take them off, and it's just the same process through. How many we got there? Eight studs that we need to put in. So I'll do that off camera. I'll get the gasket on, and then we'll get up to building the turbo onto the manifold. Before I just bring you back in here, I've got all the studs in, and I've got the gasket on. Now looking at this head. I don't think it's been ported or polished to any degree but I think it has been port matched to the gasket and looking at the bit I've just cleaned off there's hardly any caster marks whatsoever but if you look a bit further in I don't think you can see that but they're still quite rough edged so I think just the outsides have just been port matched at some point in its life, just to give a bit of airflow, I'm not really too sure. Don't know why you'd port match and not do the rest of the head. Um, don't know what the intake manifold is like, um, or the intake side of the head. Make a start of stripping this turbo down. We have got a new one of these oil drain hoses coming from Roos, but what I'll do is I'll just stick that back on um, so we can at least run up to make sure that's all okay. And then when the hoses come from Roos, we'll change it all then. One of the water hoses. Try and stick them in a place where I know roughly where they go. And this is the other one that I've already taken off. We'll give them a bit of a clean as well.
banjo fitting for the oil feed. Again, we'll give that a bit of a clean up and um, we'll stick that back on. Not really too sure how they seal. I think it might, might just be a tapered thread. I'm not sure if we will just stick some PTFE tape on there or not. We will see. Okay, so this is a new turbo. Um, it's a stage two hybrid. I've got this from Burton Powers. Um, not too sure where they get that from. Maybe TurboTechnics, who knows. Um, we're gonna stick this um, oil drain bag on. I'll just give it a little bit of a, a clean up. Got a new gasket. New gasket. You shouldn't need to put any sealant on these. water pipes I've only got two aluminium washers so what I'll do is I'll put the, the back water pipe on and then again I'm not gonna be running any water for it today just some weight for the hoses um, so we'll put the back water pipe on first and then um, we'll put the oil feed on and then we'll hook it up to the to the manifold itself Just a turbo oil feed pipe. I'm not going to put any PTFE on it. I think it's just a paper to fit what it looks of it.
Okay. Now there wasn't a gasket on here when I took it all apart, but you can get a gasket, and I did get a gasket. It just makes sense to put it on. Okay, just from Burton Power again. Before I just bring in here, you can see this locking washer, all the tabs have been bent up to lock the actual nut, but nothing to lock it to the actual turbo. So whoever installed the turbo last didn't do the locking nuts correctly. This is how it should look like. So you've got the two tabs on the corners holding it to the turbo. And then that middle tab, you're meant to knock up against the nut to hold the nut so then it all locks up together. I'm just going to do the other three and then we'll get on to installing it onto the actual car. Right, I've got the turbo oil bolt onto the manifold now, so we're just going to slip it on onto the, um, onto the head. That's what she said! <laughs> <laughs> Some nice new copper washers, uh, copper nuts, sorry. them all done we'll get the exhaust back on get the turbo oil feed and return on and then I'm gonna get the alternator on all right turbo is on oil drain pipe is on down pipe is on oil feed Pipe is on. I've put on the um, intake pipe for now. Um, I don't know if it affects the running or not, but we'll just put it on because of the, the meter and valve there. Um, done all these turbo actuate pipes, so they're all nice and new. Um, we're now going to start doing the injectors. So I've got all new hardware for that now. So we've got all new O-rings, new stainless steel, injector clamps with the bolts from Auto Specialists. And I've just done one injector here, put the new seal on it, and the new clamps. That one's ready to fit, so I've got the other three to do. I'm just going to do it, I'm just going to put them all on. Save you guys standing around watching me. Uh, just get it done and 
hopefully get this thing started up today because time is pressing on and the length of the video is also pressing on. Quick little update. Got all the injectors in now. All the new clamps and bolts and seals and whatnot. So they're all good to go. While I was around here, I noticed that there's a couple of clamps missing for the rocker cover. So I ordered them down here along with a new rocker cover gasket. So I'm just going to whip that on again. I'm just going to get on and do it because um, I really want to get this started today. So I've taken this cover off and gave it a clean on the old parts washer. It turns out it's a chrome cover. It's been painted black. Don't know why you'd do that. Just leave it chrome. But there you go. New gasket, pick the vines, and also the new stainless hardware to fit the rocker cover. These are the old injector clamps. You can see the state of them. And that one. That one's over there somewhere. And the old seals, look. You can see how badly chewed up these are. So there's a good job we replaced that. I'll just take you over. Try have a look at this. Not really too sure it's got up where you can but I'm not really too sure it's got the operated springs or collets and yeah, look like it's got a standard style lifter on it doesn't look like they're adjustable ones or solid ones so we'll get those bang together okay we're getting somewhere now we got the alternator bracket on, all the alternator belts tightened up, all the hardware in there. Looking lovely. All connected up. Turbos all connected up. All the oil lines. The rocker covers back on with all the new hardware. Now I did notice when I took the rocker cover off there was a couple of loose bolts. And it turned out to be that the threads inside the head are well, non-existent really. Um, so this one here and this one here. Um, so later on we're going to take all them out and helicore them. Not today, another day. I um, might show you how to do that if you're all interested. Um, standard um, breather system is all on. We have got a oil catch can or breather can, whatever you want to call it, to put on. So we'll do that on another video. So the only thing left to do really is to put a battery on and I'll set a couple of cameras up and um, see if we can get it to fire up. Okay, I've got the battery connected now. Everything is connected. Hopefully, I've just got to do the magic handshake in the car to get the, the engine or the immobiliser to unimmobilise and then we'll see if we can start it up.
Start. Start. Come on. Come on. I need you, Eleanor. I need you now. Now. Okay, that's a no then. Um, I guess I'll do a little bit of problem solving and see what we come up with. Play this. Talk to me, my boy. God damn it, son, we gave it our best shot. I don't like this any more than you do, but... We ain't gonna make it, son. We're gonna hang it up. Whoa, negatory, negatory. What are you, crazy, son? Okay. So it turns out that you need all the intercooler pipes on so it's drawing in air from the metering valve so it then simulates that there's air going through it so it then allows the fuel to go through it. So this determines how much airflow you've got to how much fuel goes in and because there wasn't no airflow that wasn't moving. So I stuck the intercooler back on, I stuck the intercooler pipes on loosely and I've had it not started but spluttering um, so hopefully the next time it should splutter into life. coolant in it so I'm just going to turn it off but that sounds absolutely fantastic we've got it running I've been on the emails to Roost Motorsports the hoses are in production I should receive them at the end of the week hopefully today being Saturday so hopefully by next video I like to do an RS video every Monday um, let's film it over the weekend um, so hopefully next weekend I'll have the hoses and get all the radiator in I can get the coolant in it and just get it all buttoned up and hopefully we can take it out for a little test drive and see what happens but that's it for today thank you for watching